Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my lovelies. Like I promised that we will be more proactive on my YouTube channel and we have tons of new videos coming for you guys. I just finished um, some spell work for some clients. It is very, very late into, or I should say very early into the morning. It is 4.30 in the morning, 4.31 now. Um, and I just came across the uh, great impulse to do you guys a video. So we're going to be channeling messages that are for each one of the zodiac signs. And this is going to be what you can expect in the next coming three days. Uh, so these are um, not necessarily, as an example, if you see it in a month from now, it's still going to resonate as it is uh, energetically is what uh, the energy and the messages that will come through. So we're going to say in the next coming three days what you can expect. However, if you come across this video uh, two months from now, it may still resonate as we are connecting energetically. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to start off here with my lovely Aries. By the way, Aries season coming brightest of blessings to all the Aries out there. Let's see. Let's call in our spirits, spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels. Please step forward. Allow me to open up as a vessel of communication. Let it be you who speaks through me. Let it not be me who speaks, but you. Allow me to guide my followers, my subscribers, on their journey towards answers, removing any doubts or any fears. <clears throat> All right, let's see what is unfolding for Aries Spirit Guides. Give us clarity, give us insight. What is unfolding for Aries? What are the messages that they need to hear at this point in time? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We are using a multitude of oracle cards here. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into your reading, Aries. Let's see what's going on here. All right, my lovely Aries, I feel that the theme that is going to be very prominent for you in the next coming days um, has a lot to do with a bit of feeling restricted in regards to how you express yourself or how you communicate. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with the confusion of some type of soulmate connection. Um, it's almost like it almost feels to you an uh, like so hard to deny um for some of you guys you may be dealing with a person someone that you've been dealing with for quite a while and though it may be unstable or though it may feel like the connection could never really become stabilized um the signs quote unquote or uh the returning of that person that continuously comes or keeps coming back into your life for some of you guys, you may actually see them as your soulmate um, because there is a very strong connection, strong bond, or the feeling that it's very difficult to move on from this person. This has been a recurring journey for you, a recurring lesson. Um, we do have here the temple path as well as unrequited love. So this is speaking to me about the feeling of wanting to give your love or your devotion to someone that is not so much about not receiving it because they are receiving it, which is why they keep coming back into your life. It is a situation where perhaps the person pulls away from you, starts to do other things in their life, but they always keep recurring, you know, the cycle of coming back. And the reason for this is because with you, they may find the unconditional love that they lack within themselves. So there is a theme here of the fear to open up or the fear to connect with others because there is a fear of what if I move on and this person decides to change or this person decides to um, really put effort, you know, to do it right this time. So 
in essence, the journey is speaking to me about having the need to let go, Aries. It's time to let go. It's time to really, your life purpose, one of the lessons that you need to learn is to devote the much effort and energy and unconditional love that you give others onto yourself. And there is a cycle that keeps repeating that needs to come to a halt or that you need to put a stop to. And it is of seeing the red, you know, the red flags, but not being able to walk away from that. So this is stemming from childhood trauma, what you've experienced, love to be at a very young age. Um, the fear that you are too hard to love or that you are too difficult to love, the fear of rejection. Um, and though when we deal with unrequited love, it often feels like in essence, it is a rejection. But the fact that they don't tell you outright, I don't want to deal with you, and they keep stringing you along is a form of manipulation. And what they're telling you here is that this cycle is coming to an end, or it's an, there's a need for this cycle to come to an end. And with, is it safe for you to love? It is about opening your heart to to give and receive the highest energy of love, but it also speaks about having the tenacity, having the courage, having the guts to give yourself the opportunity of finding happiness elsewhere, of finding happiness somewhere else. Do not take it as a need of having to you're not walking away from this person. What you're doing is when do we get to the point of saying enough is enough? The more harder you try or the harder you try to love them, the harder you try to prove yourself to them by overdoing, almost makes them purposely take you for granted because you're there, because you're accessible to them, because they're able to go in and out of your life as they please. So this is a theme, not just with relationships, you guys, this is potentially with the people in your life, where there is a feeling of being like not secluded, but <coughs> excuse me, the feeling of being put to the side, or per perhaps for some of you guys, even overlooked, um, being ignored maybe by family members because they're constantly nitpicking at you or trying to force you to see their way of seeing life and how relationships or how you should lead your life. Um, and though oftentimes there could be some type of sacrifice that you've done for the greater good, right? And the greater good being those around you. Um, it's time for you to take it back to yourself, to make yourself a priority, Aries, for those that appreciate you. Obviously, those are the connections that you need in your life. But even with family dynamics, if there is a feeling of toxicity or a feeling of the only way they can love you, the only way they can accept you is through, uh, through having, you know, conditions, conditions on the love that they give to you, then that's a toxic energy because it should be unconditional. For some of you guys, this could be you. This could be you that you often find yourself being in relationships or in connections where your love is conditional, where you put, you know, butts in it. If, if you don't do this or don't do that, it's because you don't love me. Um, and it's basically putting conditions on the love that you offer or the love that you receive. And so the bigger question here is 
do you do this as a form of protecting your energy or do you do this as a form of pushing people to have them prove their love or loyalty to you? And whichever flip of the coin that is, it is based on fear. It is based on, like I said, rejection uh, or judgment or the feeling of giving something in return for something else. And if it is a toxic relationship that you're that you're dealing with, this keeps you from opening your horizons or opening yourself up to new love. Because the thing about it is oftentimes what I see clients do is they hold on to what's not working out of fear of not being alone or not being lonely. And then when the next opportunity comes, right, they either jump to that opportunity or they give the opportunity to that new person all the while not letting go of what's toxic just because it's comfortable, just because it's someone that they've been dealing with for a very long time. And it's based off of fear. It's almost like how I said sometimes in the readings when you are planning on, you know, setting a goal for yourself or you are planning on starting a relationship or a connection, if you're already thinking of other outcomes, meaning if, as an example, if you're trying to start a business and you're also contemplating other options, you've already made up your mind that you're going to fail in that, which is why you're seeking out other possibilities. But when you're focused, when you give yourself the opportunity or give yourself in completely to what you're doing, sink or swim, you're going to swim. So what they're telling you here is in connection to that, do not hold on to something because of fear of what if I never find someone? What if I never, you know, find a stable relationship? Or what if, you know, I don't, I'm not able to connect with anyone else. Like I connect with my family, even though they're extremely toxic, even though they're very judgmental. Um, you hold on to it because it feels comfortable because I know what it, how much it hurts, but I've been dealing with it for so long that it just feels safe here. Uh, the biggest thing, the biggest fear in humans is change, right? Because we're creatures of habit. There is a need to shift that paradigm. There is a need to transcend this cycle so that you don't continuously keep repeating it. And also one of the things that they're telling you here, Aries, is that it's very important to remember that when it's not forced when it is unconditional, and like I said, it doesn't have to be relationships. This could be connections, friendships, family dynamics. You feel free to speak. And when you feel like you have to watch what you say or you have to bite your tongue, it's like walking in eggshells. So you're not fully being able to be who you naturally are because you're so guarded. So there's a need to learning to either speak up or stand for what you believe in, stand for what you want with conviction. So again, you may be dealing with the situation of a person that is keeps coming back in and out of your life in the next coming days where you're going to get to a point where you're going to feel like, okay, this, I can't deal with, it, with this anymore, or something needs to change. And with the speaker oracle card here, it's speaking to me about having the need to speak up, like stop silencing yourself because you don't want to make others uncomfortable or because you don't want to jeopardize that connection or because you don't want them to get mad and upset and stop talking to you. At this point, it's time for you to speak up regardless of who it affects, regardless of who it offends, right? Because when we start to create boundaries, people are no longer able to walk all over us. All right, my lovelies, <coughs> excuse me. All right, let's move on. 
we're going to go now with Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus here. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages here for our lovely Taurus? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, Taurus, what I'm seeing for you guys is I feel like you guys have gone through this journey for quite a while in regards to having to make a decision. There's something that needs your attention or that you need to make a decision. A choice needs to happen regarding an energy or situation that has a lot to do with, for some of you guys, this could be uh, your home life, this could be the family dynamic, this could be a family member, your brothers, your sisters. There is a lot of hostility that you've been dealing with. Um, for some of you, this could be, for some of you guys, this could be like, um, you know, when everyone in the home just doesn't seem to get along or everyone's talking smack about each other behind each other's back. Um, or a lot of confrontation that's happening. And for some of you guys, this could be even regarding uh, relationship or partnerships, uh, especially those of you guys that are married. Um, it's like a lot of confrontation that's been happening. It's something that is underneath that is brewing and has been brewing. And you've in many times have felt almost like you can't control it or like you can't control others around you. It's uncomfortable for you. Um, there is this constant fear of having to protect your energy only because everyone is so confrontational or everyone's creating a lot of drama around you. And we go back to what we were just saying with Aries about making decisions and obviously choices that sometimes we don't want to make because we we fear the change that comes with that. Um, but what they're telling you here is that it is very important uh, to understand what the underlying issue is here with the confrontations with uh, people just trying to get a rise out of you. And this primarily has to do with the fact of learning to find the peace within you, Taurus. So when I say that, it's almost like though the world may be crumbling around you, metaphorically speaking, if you go into panic mode, your energy just connects with the chaotic energy around you, right? So either you're being dragged into drama or you're taking sides or you're speaking out of anger and frustration that just creates more hostility with those around you. But if you can find the peace within yourself, meaning you don't have to take the bait, you don't have to take sides, you can speak up about what your opinion is about something, without it being confrontational, without other people getting offended by it and not allowing anyone or anything outside of you to control your emotions. So for some of you guys, this could be work-wise. It could be that people are really testing you. They're really trying you. And there's a feeling of frustration. There's a feeling of like, wanting to speak up, wanting to battle with words, but it's based on frustration. And if you tune in with yourself and connect with yourself, you're able to see through that and to find your center, your peace, to be above them. And to say, you know what, I'm not going to allow other people to affect how I feel, right? 
you could be having a great day. And then your mom or your sister come to you and then they tell you some drama that happened and they're trying to steer shit up. And you can quickly fall into that energy or you can assess, hear them out, but not necessarily rush into making any type of judgments, um, waiting for the dust to settle, basically. And in that, if you take the other course, right, if you take the other path of just spewing judgment and anger or frustration, then it becomes something bigger. And they have now affected your energy and how you view and how you experience the rest of your day. What they're telling you here is rise above that. There is an importance to find the stillness in you to make rational decisions so that you can then be able to experience or live a more fulfilled life, a more balanced life. In essence, what they're telling you is become so strong, so mentally strong that you're able to see people's bullshit and when they're trying to steer up things, right, or trying to steer the pot, um, just to get a rise out of you or to drag you into drama. Like see above that, rise above that. And don't let other people, like I said, change how you're feeling about yourself or your mood, in essence, your mood, the change in your mood because of everything that is out happening outside of you. I hope that's making sense. It's almost like what they're telling you is in order to find peace in the outside world and those around you, you have to find that peace within yourself. For some of you guys, it could be frustration because you feel like you're not advancing, um, whether it's career, whether it's in your finances. And there is a decision to be made. There is a choice to be made. There has to be some type of action in order for you to see an ultimate different result. But in order to do that, you must first find your peace. You must first find your tranquility or what it is that you're wanting to accomplish, to achieve in order to be able to then take the steps towards that. Um, and ultimately, let it not be for those of you guys that, as an example, have been trying to grow in a company or in your business or in your field, and there's a lot of hostility, there's a lot of backstabbing, there's a lot of that going on. There is frustration, like I'm over this, I want to grow, but it's like it seems impossible because everyone's just, you know, out for themselves type of thing. Um, there is a decision to be made. And in that decision, let it be because, you know what, this is not working out for me. Maybe it's time I start looking into another job or into another thing. But do it when you are at peace, not when you are upset. So ultimately what they're telling you here is do not let it get to a point where they really frustrate you and you just blow up and you walk out of the job or you walk out of your family or you walk out of a, you know, argument with a relative or a loved one or even your partner. Don't let it get to that point is what they're telling you, because then that will basically get the better of you and you end up losing. What they're telling you is find the peace within you. Make decisions when you are at peace, not when it's at the point of I can't take it no more. All right. All right. Now let's go to Gemini. <clears throat> let's see what's going on with Gemini. Sun, moon, rising, or Venus. What are the messages for Geminis, our lovely Geminis? Oh. Okay, we got cards flipping. Okay, they flipped back. It's a lot of... It's a big ass deck, you guys. <laughs> All right, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages here for our lovely Geminis? All right, here we go. We got two cards that were flipping out. Actually, I grabbed two cards 
and this one flipped up. Okay. Okay, Gemini, for some of you guys, you will be walking away or finally deciding um, to end a cycle in regards to a connection, relationship, partnership. For some of you guys, this could even be a marriage. Um, it's time to let go, walk away from this situation in order to resolve it. So there is a bit of frustration. You've been dealing with this for quite a while. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a relationship itself. It could be a partnership. It could be a work situation um, or anything to do with contracts for some of you. But I feel heavily that it has a lot to do specifically for those either in a uh, marriage or current going through some type of separation here. Um, what they're telling you is that there is a need for you to let go of this situation. I feel like those of you guys that are resonating with this, you could have potentially been dealing with a temporary separation or what you were under the impression of a temporary separation. And it almost seems very clear to you that this person may not really want to fix the relationship anymore because I see a very imbalance here. I almost sense like the six of pentacles, which indicates to me someone taking advantage of your generosity or your effort and kind of stringing you along. And I feel like in the next coming days, there is going to be a situation that arises where you feel like you've been either taken advantage of. And I hear you saying enough is enough. Um, this could be a partnership as well, like in business, uh, career, um, where there is almost like a reawakening in you of understanding that uh, people have or your partner has been taking for granted or has been taking uh, your, um, you know, your effort, your hard work, um, taking it for granted um, and almost, like I said, kind of stringing you along. Now, this could be in any aspect of your life. Like I said, it could be family, it could be dynamic, the people that you're currently surrounding with. A theme that's coming up is the feeling of, okay, I've done enough. I'm no longer going to be, you know, the doormat. I'm no longer going to allow people. So I see you building up boundaries. I see you becoming more powerful as we do have here, <laughs> excuse me, the power card, uh, which indicates to me, when this card shows up, it usually indicates a situation where it's almost like you've been pushed to your limit. And it's like you realizing that and finally saying, you know what, I'm done with this, like putting your hands in the air. I'm done with this. I'm no longer dealing with this. And it's time for me to take my power back. So again, it's something that you've been dealing with for quite a while um, that has, like I said, almost pushed you to the limit. And at this point, you're like, okay, I understand that enough is enough. I understand that uh, it's time for me to bring the balance back in my life. And this would include taking your power back. And you take your power back based off of um, kind of the awakening, right? The awakening of enough is enough. I'm no longer allowing people to play me or to take me for granted or for people to, you know, be doing backhanded compliments um, only to underline kind of disrespect me. There is the purification card here, which again, it's taking your power back and really setting out or looking towards the future. It's time for me to move on. It's time for me to become or take my power back. And in taking your power back, you're becoming more confident. You're becoming more walking with purpose type of energy. You also have the taking risks. So for some of you, this is a decision that, you know, hasn't been easy for you to make. I feel like, again, it's it's almost like you were pushed to making this decision. The positive in this is that what Spirit is saying is you're taking your power back finally, Gemini. You're remembering how powerful you are. You're remembering, um, you know, the, the, the value in you and the worthiness in you. It's like, I, you know, I, as a Gemini, I am worthy and I am a, a good person and I do for other people. But at this point, like, if you can't appreciate that, then I'm taking that shit right back. So again, there is almost like a empowering type of energy here that's happening for you. 
Um, we also have opportunity and solitude, which indicates to me, again, the need for sometimes in life, we kind of have to pull our energy back, um, maybe isolate ourselves, or maybe this is something that you've been going through for a while where you've kind of isolated yourself because you didn't want other people to know about the issues that were surrounding either the relationship, the partnership, or, um, the drama that was going on in your life. And in that, um, sometimes it is necessary for us to do that to recharge our batteries, which could potentially be the reason why we have the power card here. In in doing that, you're taking your power back, like I said, and you're creating opportunity, right? We see the new moon here, which is the beginning stages of something new coming into our lives. So again, I feel like uh, in the next coming days for a lot of you Geminis, There is almost like this energy of empowerment, this energy of knowing, you know what, I'm a Gemini, I am powerful, I am extremely smart, and I can see past people's bullshit, and I'm no longer dealing with uh, unnecessary uh, giving effort and putting energy towards something that, you know, you can see a mile away that people are trying to either take advantage of that or string you along. And at this point, you're making the decision to completely release yourself from either responsibilities that are not of your own, or for some of you, especially if it is a divorce issue going on, um, maybe this person has been stringing you along because in essence, they need you, Uh, whether it's in the material aspect or whether it's uh, you doing for them, you know, still treating them like your wife or like your husband or like your boyfriend or like your girlfriend, because they can do it for themselves. At this point, I see you taking your power back and being like, okay, you don't want to work it out. That's fine. I'm not going to put energy and effort towards something that is just not working out at this point. So very empowering energy here for you, Gemini's. All right, now we're going with Cancer. What are the messages here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? If you guys like these readings, like, share, and comment so that I can continue doing these videos for you guys. We have a few pick of card readings coming um, as well as the April readings. All right. What are the messages here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh. We got cards. Let me see how many cards we've got here. <clears throat> All right, Cancers. For a lot of you guys, or the majority of you guys, you're going to be experiencing new connections coming into your life. Yes, this could be romantically, but this can also be um, the friend the friend dynamic, uh, your social circle uh, expanding, or perhaps for some of you guys, I'm hearing isolation. Uh, so for some of you guys, it's you coming out of isolation and reconnecting with friends um, and your social circle. But what I am seeing is for the majority of you, it's almost like your love life is going to be taking um, a center stage. There has been this weird energy surrounding cancer in regards to love and romance. I've seen a lot of breakups as well as a lot of like separations or people not really knowing where they're standing with each other. Um, And this is a recurring theme that's been happening, but that's no longer going to be the case, cancer. I do see a connection coming through for some of you guys. Uh, This is definitely a new person. It's not anyone that you're currently dealing with. It's not anyone that you may, even if you just started talking to someone right now and doing this reading, you're like, okay, I just started talking to someone. No, that's not the person because I don't see them in your present life, but I do see them in the vicinity of your energy field, which indicates to me it is a spanking brand new connection. And like I said, I feel like for some of you guys, your love life has been either extremely boring or nothing really exciting going on there. There's going to be an increase in that as I do see the passion coming back to you, the passion of, you know, being ignited, um, being giddy, being excited for some of you guys, even, um, 
a bit of like re revamp is what I'm hearing. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're deciding to cut your hair. For others of you, it could be like uh, deciding to treat yourself and uh, I don't know, buying new clothes, something like you're becoming more self-aware of how you present yourself to the world. And the reason for this is it's not a coincidence that this is something you're already experiencing has a lot to do because you're subconsciously already sensing um, the passion and the excitement in your love life in, or in the romance um, department starting to pick up. There is, a, you know, like I said, very newness here that is connected here. Now, you also do have two uh, chakra, two chakra oracle cards, um, which indicates the rest and rejuvenation, which to me indicates the amplifying of your energy, which is why, you know, what I'm sensing here is for a lot of you guys, it's the up, upkeep or the reconnecting with yourself and how you feel about yourself and it manifesting in the outside world, which again, I'm seeing for some of you guys like, uh, a new image, a new like cutting your hair a certain style or for others of you coloring your hair, something about wanting to change or transform how you feel in the physical aspect, which would be how you present yourself to the world. And you have the uh, seventh chakra here with Archangel Uriel. So again, I feel like it's very... Uh, your vibration is definitely going to be very vibrant, um, cancer for some of you guys, you're already experiencing this type of energy or you're feeling like something is about to happen in your life. You just can't put your finger on it. And what they're showing me here is there is definitely new beginnings. And that's the reason why, uh, you're feeling a little bit more in tune, a little bit more connected. You're feeling more like yourself again. Whereas in the past you could have felt a bit like foggy minded, um, there is a revamping of your energy. <coughs> there is uh, the excitement of your love life. For those of you guys that are in a serious committed relationship, I feel like there's a deepening of the connection and uh, passion being reignited, which is something very important to keep in mind, you guys, when, you know, I tell my clients when they are in a committed relationship, it doesn't take one person. It takes two people to maintain the flame. And passion is a very important aspect in our life when it comes to relationships and partnerships. So again, I definitely see the revamp of that almost like the rebirth of your love life, especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while. There is definitely new beginnings for you, uh, major transformative energy right now that is happening. So uh, beautiful energy here, Cancer. All right. And now we're going with Leos, let's see what's going on with my lovely Leos. What are the messages for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Interesting cards here, Leo. <clears throat> All right, Leo. If you've been dealing with a person that you feel like you can't really put your finger on them, uh, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> that was funny. Metaphorically speaking, if you feel like they're hot and cold. You can't really figure them out. Um, or if you're dealing with trust issues, um, what they're saying here is pay attention to that. It's not a coincidence. Even if they're not giving you, uh, as an example, they haven't given you reasons to mistrust them, but for some reason you're just feeling like they're not being completely honest with you or like they're not being, um, they're not being consistent in the connection. Listen to your intuition right now, Leo, because what spirit is trying to guide you is they're trying to guide you to open your eyes to really see things for what they really are through your intuition, not your physical eyes. So again, if you're sensing like there's something off about this person or they're creating some type of mistrust in you, there is a reason for it. And 
in doing this and in tuning into your intuition and listening to your intuition, you're better guided towards where your true happiness is, even if it's not with this person. And I feel that for a lot of you guys, it's not with this person. Um, because I see abundance here and the message of listening to your intuition will guide you to your happiness or to your abundance, which would be considered, you know, the, the fulfillment. Um, it, it's almost like, because this person is very attractive or there is something about them that could potentially be very tempting for you, you're overseeing the fact that the alarms are going off or the red flags are like right there and you're kind of ignoring them or you keep giving this person, you know, opportunity after opportunity and they keep letting you down. It's time for you to pay attention to that so that you can release yourself from that so that you don't, it doesn't consume you basically is what they're saying. So it doesn't consume you uh, to the point of blindness and not being able to find your path or your way back to where your abundance or your happiness is. I do see a relationship or some type of connection unfolding for you, um, but it's not necessarily with the person that you're dealing with right now as they're giving me here that there is a connection that is coming towards you that has the potential for something long-term. But in order for this person to step in or in order for this person to come into your life, you have to be ready to let go of what you've been kind of turning a blind eye to, something that hasn't been working out. Um, so what they're telling you here is do not fear um, do not fear giving yourself the opportunity. Do not attach yourself to anyone or anything that is not sitting well with your soul. That, you know, if you're talking to someone or dealing with someone, they, they constantly have you like mentally exhausted and emotionally drained. It's the constant instability of it, like an emotional roller coaster. It's time to choose yourself. It's time for you to... Uh, be done with that. Um, Leo is not about to, you know, play about your time. <laughs> and what they're telling you is, remember, uh, you are the sun, Leo. You are powerful. You are the joy, right? The joy and the happiness and the loyalty that the sun, <coughs> excuse me, that the sun represents. And you deserve nothing but that in return. And if you're not finding that with the people that you're dealing with right now, um, then it's time to give yourself the opportunity of releasing. Because I know sometimes Leos could potentially, like you're so loyal when you are really committed to someone that sometimes your loyalty makes you, you become enslaved to the loyalty. Um, and it's like, I don't want to give up on them. I don't, because you're not a quitter. But if this person is not really giving you anything in return, then it's time to start paying attention to those red flags and release yourself from that. Um, try the best you can to really uh, tune into your creativity right now, Leo. For a lot of you guys, it could be the picking up of painting, uh, the picking up of anything that has to do through creative outlook. So for some of you guys, it could be taking taking on like uh, acting classes or music or uh, writing, anything that is creative at this point in time, what they're telling you is really uh, lean towards your creativity, Leo, because this is also going to open up a lot of doors for you. Um, maybe even finding passions that you didn't know you possessed or that you had within you. All right. All right. And we are... Now let's see what's going on here with <coughs> Virgo, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages here for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are enjoying these videos, like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe so you guys can get the notifications of the newest videos going up. If you guys haven't checked out the Pluto transit, definitely check that out. I believe it was uploaded yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. That is definitely something you want to be prepared for. 
All right, what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Virgo? All right, here we go, Virgo. Let's see what is going on with you. They're telling me that there is some type of wish fulfillment or some type of manifestation that is coming through for you, Virgo. For some of you guys, you've been working at this for quite a while. There's anxiety. There's anxiety or stress, anxiousness that is connected to this. But what Spirit is saying is still your mind. Um, basically have faith. And faith has everything to do with believing that something has happened or that will happen regardless if you see the fruits of that right now or if you don't. You know, human experience is like, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. And what Spirit is telling you here, it's already in your energetic field. It's already there. You've already manifested this. All you have to do is release it into the universe and have faith that it's going to come through for you. It takes courage. Yes, it takes courage. It takes courage to believe in yourself. But think of it this way. One way of explaining this is when I ask you to close your eyes and think of, think of a person that you love, that you care for, that there is nothing in this world you wouldn't do for them, right? Think of them. Picture them right next to you. And in that moment, I'm telling you that there are three doors in front of both of you. And those three doors are going to open and it's going to be people that are going to come towards you with the intention of attacking you. What is it that you think of in this very moment? What is your reaction right? Having that person you love and you would do anything for right next to you. And you are very aware that in the next seconds, those three doors will open and people will come out of it that are going to physically try to attack you and that person you love. What is your first reaction? And naturally would be to protect them, right? To, uh, tell them that you're going to do everything you can to protect them and to protect yourself and, but your natural is instinct is to protect them. Well, why can you do that for yourself? Why can you believe in yourself? Why can you protect yourself? Why can you uh, go to the ends of the world for you? So again, we go back to that of having faith and having faith in yourself and having faith in what you know you deserve. Once you come to that acknowledgement, that awareness Know that everything you want or you've been working towards or you've been focusing on or it's been your goal, know that you are worthy of it. It is not impossible. If if you've been putting effort towards it, it's already in your energetic field. It's just aligning yourself to it. So have faith because it's coming through for you is what they're saying. Have courage in this process of stillness or have faith that though it may not be here right now, they're telling you it's coming and it will manifest for you. You see, that's what I just said. Have faith, have faith, put it out there and let go of it. Let go, let it go into the universe because it's already coming towards you, Virgo. And we have wonders and wonders is the, the endless possibilities of what you're able to achieve. You know, oftentimes us, we are the ones that dictate what we are able to accomplish in this life. It's not circumstance. It's not situation. It's not people um, <clears throat> around us, right? People that throw us bad juju or people that, you know, go out of their way to physically, <clears throat> to physically harm us or to keep us from progress and movement. Because the moment you decide that you are powerful, that you are godly because God resides within you and therefore you are part of God and God created you in his image or in her image, therefore you are the manifestation of God. There is nothing much more powerful than the moment you decide you are a powerful entity and you're able to create and manifest anything of your choosing in your life. 
So again, there is major fulfillment that's happening. There is a manifestation that's coming through for you. If you guys have been hoping or wanting or working towards something and you're waiting on that call, right, for that promotion, or you're waiting for that person to finally give in and let go of fears and give in to the love that they have for you, or to commit to you, or, you know, the goal that you've been trying to achieve, it is already yours for goal. How does it feel? How do you feel knowing that it's already yours, that you've earned it, that you deserve it, that you are worthy? So let go of your anxiety and open your heart to receiving my lovely Virgos because it is definitely manifesting for you. Simplicity. It is having trust in yourself and having trust in the universe that it is conspiring and rearranging situations, circumstances, and people so that it can better manifest for you as quickly as possible. Beautiful, beautiful message here, Virgo. All right, my lovelies, now let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. What is the messages that we have here for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages here, Spirit, for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Okay, here we go. Similar cards to <coughs> Virgo. You have about three cards, three or four cards that uh, we just pulled out for Virgo. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Virgo. <coughs> Libra, what I'm hearing is have the courage to think big. It's time for you to stop thinking small or putting yourself in a box or living your life to the expectation of other people or what other people think your life should be like. It takes courage for us to follow our calling or for us to follow our passions because nothing's set in stone, right? And if I am not sure 100 percent of the outcome of something it's very scary to throw yourself out there and to try anyways but i feel like this lack of certainty that you want that you want to see or that you want uh the universe to promise to you it's like i won't take that big risk unless i know the certainty of the outcome that is what has kept you in a box. That's what has kept you from expanding, from growing. It's almost like you're watering yourself down because of fear. So what they're telling you here is it's time for you to think big. It's time for you to take risks. And, you know, oftentimes risk could be a scary thing to do, right? But... There is a thing as unnecessary risks and risks that are necessary. So what I mean by that is, as an example, if you've been wanting to manifest something into your life, for some of you guys, this could be anything that has to do with awakening, anything that has to do with spirituality. For others of you, it could be um, the connection of a soulmate type of connection that you've had or that you've dealt with or that you're currently dealing with. But there is a lot of uncertainty around that. It's created a lot of anxiety for you and fears. But if you sit there and do nothing about it, then years are going to pass you by and you're always going to wonder, right? And there's nothing worse than to have regret 
over something that you could have done and you chose not to do. So what I mean by that is, again, we talk about risks that are unnecessary risk and risks that are necessary. An unnecessary risk would be like you reach out to someone that maybe you've been missing or been thinking about and you reached out to them and they were very cold, they were very detached or they just didn't answer. Then it is an unnecessary risk to reach out again, right? Because your message was not received or your energy was not received. But if you always thought of reaching out but never actually did reach out, then that is a necessary risk if it's something that is not sitting with your soul, that it's not that it's creating anxiety within your soul instead of being at peace with it. You don't want years to pass by and you feel like you didn't take those risks that were necessary in your life that could have potentially changed your life. So there is a need here to have more courage when it comes to thinking big and making bold moves. If you want changes in your life or if you want to transform your life, you have to, have to make those bold moves. And this could be as simplistic as dealing with someone right now that you don't really know where they stand with you uh, and you're interested and you feel like they're interested, but you're just scared of speaking up. If you never speak up, you're never going to know. And for all you know, that person could have been your soulmate or that person could have been the one that God sent to you. But because of the not so much undecisiveness, but the fear of rejection or the fear of failures, what keeping, what's keeping you from, you know, taking that bold move, then you're never going to know. And you don't want to go about life uh, cutting yourself short, Libra. So what they're telling you here is have the courage to be bold. Have the courage to reach for the stars. Have the courage to fight for your dreams, to fight for your happiness, to not do for or live your life for others because in the end, you're the one that's going to be left with regrets. And you can potentially have the fulfillment that you're seeking, that your soul is seeking, but you have to connect with yourself and you have to learn to listen to your intuition. We have a lot of purple here. And <clears throat> this is about the spiritual plane. This is about being able to bring dreams into manifestation into the earthly plane. So again, if you want major changes, um, transformation, it's going to take for you to take bold moves. Do not expect life to change or to experience growth and advancement if you're not willing to make the moves, if you're not willing to take the chances, if you're not willing to jump on the ship the moment that ship passes right by you. Um, just because it doesn't stop completely doesn't mean it's not the boat for you. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's about putting yourself out there. It's about taking risk. It's about being more spontaneous. There is a need for you to be spontaneous. There's a need for you to be courageous. All right, my lovelies powerful powerful messages here you guys <clears throat> all right now let's go with scorpio let's see what's going on with my scorpio sun moon rising venus what are the messages for scorpio sun moon rising venus like i said this is what the themes that are going to be unfolding for you guys in the next coming three days doesn't matter when you see this video for some of you guys you may be seeing it after five months, it doesn't matter. We're energetically uh, speaking about or getting the messages energetically. So it will still resonate and connect with you at that moment in time. All right, spirits, what are the messages here for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, thank you, spirits. Here we go. There is something relating to a truth or lack of clarity regarding a situation that for some of you guys, you're going to be experiencing.
for some of you guys, I feel like there was a situation where there was a lot of confusion and I feel that the confusion came from people outside of you or outside of this connection. I feel like this is related to love and romance <clears throat> where it almost felt like both of you guys kind of were pulled towards different directions or people got involved and started getting in your ear or the person that you were dealing with to create a lot of confusion. But I feel like in the next coming days, you guys are going to be experiencing some type of revelation. And for some of you guys, it could even be the feeling of it being a miracle or something you've been hoping or praying for that is finally coming to, to the surface. There is communication that opens up here. Like I said, for some of you guys, it's going to feel like it's a miracle or like you can't believe it because there is an element of surprise in this situation. But I feel like there is an opening conversation of meeting heart to heart, being honest with each other. Um, I have the chemistry card here with the express your love. So I feel like it's love returning for some of you. Um, and this is crazy because what I'm getting is for some of you guys, this could be a person that you've been missing or like I said, had a falling out didn't necessarily end things and it just felt like there were things left unsaid um and it's coming back around and we have number 44 here so again there is almost like this reconnection where there is an opening of hearts a conversation where pride is not involved it's like authentic conversation authentic reaching out <clears throat> for some of you guys, it could be, like I said, a person that you haven't dealt with for a while. <clears throat> I'm getting the number six, the number seven. So for some of you guys, uh, the number six could be uh, very connected to this connection. The number seven, uh, it could be it's been six years or it could be seven years that you've dealt with or that you haven't heard from this person. Um, or the number six just the number six or seven could just be very important in this connection. Um, I feel like for some of you guys, this could be a connection where there was distancing involved or for others of you, it could have been that your partner or person moved to a different country um, because I'm seeing almost like the missing of each other from a distance. Um, and again, like I said, I feel like it's been a while since you heard from this person. So this is going to, there's an element of surprise here. There's an element of, it's going to feel almost like a miracle for some of you guys. Um, but it is the reconnection of it. And <clears throat> yeah, what I'm seeing here is it's almost, it's almost feeling to me like you never really got over this person. It was a very deep connection. You never really got over this person because there was never really any closure on your part and on their part as well. Um, And it's almost like a, a crazy reconnection. For some of you guys, it could be that you guys actually find each other like on Instagram, on Facebook, TikTok, some type of social media. Uh, it could be as surprising as like finding each other on Tinder. Um, but there was some type of distance involved here and other people that got involved in the situation or in the connection. Um, but there is definitely a revisiting of this. Uh, there is, like I said, I feel like ego and pride goes out the window the moment you guys are able to connect. And I feel like you guys are being authentic in your conversation. So there is a rekindling of a past relationship. For some of you guys, it could have not even been a relationship. It could have been that you were dealing with this person, but then something happened and you kind of went your own separate ways, never really giving each other the opportunity to connect on a deeper level although that connection always felt deep so I feel like there is a revisiting of that there is a connection here yeah we have 44 and 38 
uh, fourth chakra, Archangel Raphael. Uh, Raphael brings a lot of healing energy. So again, I feel like for some of you guys, this is going to feel almost like you're not going to believe that they, this person is reaching out or that this person is bumping into you or that you're reconnecting. There's an element of surprise here. There's an element of feeling like it is a miracle or something that you prayed at some point, but you kind of lost hope in this connection. Um, for others of you, it could simply mean that you've been dealing with a partner, a person that you felt was extremely stubborn or perhaps very difficult to connect on an emotional level, almost like feeling like they were emotionally unavailable. And what you're going to start to experience in the next coming days is this person fully giving in, almost like they've kind of healed themselves through this connection without really telling you where they feel safe now, or they feel like they're healed enough to open up and become vulnerable. So there's a deepening of this connection or this relationship or this partnership um, that is going to bring a lot of healing energy as well as for yourself as well, Scorpio, because I feel like you're being nurtured or you're being um, reciprocated. Uh, so there is a deepening of this connection that you will be experiencing. And like I said, for some of you guys, it's going to feel like you always hoped it would happen, but it almost feels unreal to you right now because you kind of didn't think it would actually happen. So uh, that element of surprise is a very beautiful energy um, because I'm feeling very excited about it, <laughs> uh, very giddy and very like just a uh, childlike type of energy. Uh, which is positive when we're talking about surprises, right? Because we don't want bad surprises. Um, but there is definitely a deepening of a connection here. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to <clears throat> Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Spirit. What are the messages for Sagittarius? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages for Sagis? All right, Sagittarius. Wow. <clears throat> All right, Sagittarians. There is a purification that's happening with you right now. I feel like for some of you guys, what I heard was if you've been dealing with people surrounding you or even yourself um, that we're going through like health issues or health concerns that's quickly going to be dissipating i feel like there is a purification of the body here for some of you guys it could even represent taking uh, the higher route and deciding to practice some type of like purification um purification ritual for others of you it could be like the practice of celibacy there is a desire to strengthen and connect with higher spirit through your physical body. So again, uh, for some of you guys, it could be that you've been drawn or very pulled towards purification rituals or wanting to cleanse yourself, wanting to cleanse your energy. Um, for others of you, if you, someone you know, um, someone you love or even yourself have gone through difficulties regarding like addictions alcoholism, drugs, etc. Uh, there is an overcoming of that cycle. There is almost like, like I said, purification energy is very powerful energy because it's very transformative. You have cornucopia, which indicates wish fulfillment. It is the number 11, which is a very spiritual number. And you also have victory. So wherever area in your life you felt like it's been very complicated or you've been dealing with a lot of obstacles or obstructions, uh, in regards to your growth, in regards to your stability, or in regards to the strengthening of your body, like I said, with health concerns, 
that's quickly going to be dissipating and it's almost like you're being revamped. You are being re-energized. You are being strengthened. Um, but with the victory card, I feel like for some of you guys, whatever area in your life you felt like it was extremely difficult or like you've really been going through it, <clears throat> Victory card indicates being able to overcome those obstacles. Um, like I said, any type of addictions or alcoholism, whether it's you or people around you. With the victory card, it indicates here to me that it is a cycle that you've experienced for quite a while and there is a overcoming of that. And it, though it was not easy and it hasn't been easy, um, you're going to overcome that or the people around you that you love and care for are finally being able to overcome that cycle. Body work obviously indicates to me the construction uh, or rebuilding of your body, um, metaphorically speaking. So again, uh, this is the strengthening of your immune system. This is the strengthening of the immune system of those around you that perhaps had health issues or have been dealing with health issues. We have spiritual teacher here. So obviously, uh, Sagittarians, you guys are extremely spiritual, whether you're aware of it or not. And the reason I say that is I have a lot of Sagittarians, um, not only in the family, but clients and friends. And they're like all over the spectrum, right? <laughs> the ones that are extremely not spiritual and the ones that are like above like natural crazy ability of spiritualism um but with the spiritual teacher this is you becoming wiser or tapping into your gifts sagittarius tapping into your powers in essence and being able to transform your life like completely transform it because you are strengthened you are much stronger you are much wiser or the spiritual downloads that you're getting right now is really helping you um, in being able to transform your life in a very positive way. I also see music here. So my advice to those of you guys that, and, and I will be as bold as to say, for you Sagittarians out there that have been dealing with like chronic illnesses or illnesses that are uh, very difficult to deal with. I feel like there's a miracle here there is a higher spirit that's stepping in that is healing you. So know and understand if you're watching this, whenever you watch this video, know and understand that the power of God or the power of the goddess is touching your life right now. And you are being healed or your loved one, the person that has been struggling is being healed right now. There is very spiritual, powerful entities around you right now. So whatever area in your life, Sagittarius, that you're currently dealing with or having difficulty with, I would highly encourage you to light a candle to your spirit guide, to ask them um, to step in, that you give them the power and authority of stepping in and creating miracles within your life. We have to invite them. You know, they, they're here to guide us, but sometimes our lack of connection or our lack of knowledge in being able to connect with them kind of keeps them at bay. Um, but the moment you invite them in, the moment that you open your heart to them creating miracles through you in your life, everything starts to fall into place and it is amazing. Um, I can personally tell you from personal experience, like even in the moments of doubt, they are so powerful and so strong that they will physically, um, they will physically show you, right? Because our eyes, sometimes we humans, if we don't see it, we don't believe it, um, <clears throat> that sometimes they will physically show you that they're there, that they're hearing you or that they're present. We just have to silence our mind and pay attention. So what they're telling you here is, again, you know, there is powerful healing energy around you right now, Sagittarius. So know that whatever area <clears throat> in your life that you're currently struggling or having difficulties with will be transformed and you're able to overcome. For a lot of you guys, it could also indicate the like I said, the, having the spiritual downloads where you lived a certain lifestyle and 
for the next coming year, your life is going to be completely transformed, completely different, like night and day type of thing. Um, very powerful energy here. Now, for others of you, I am hearing that there is a spirit around you. If you recently lost a family member, a loved one, your partner, um, your child, or uh, a parent, a mother, um, anyone that you've recently gone through some type of transitioning uh, to the spirit realm, know and understand that they are present and pay very close attention because I feel like someone keeps playing a, a song a song that was connected either to them or that you know it was one of their favorite songs or perhaps one of your favorite songs that you hop in your car and then you turn the radio on and it's playing. Know and understand that that is them wanting you to validate their presence for you to know and understand that they are still around you, that they are still connected to you and that they are still guarding and guiding you. So very beautiful message here, powerful message here for Sagittarians. <clears throat> All right, now let's go to Capricorns. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages, Spirit? What are the messages that we have here for Capricorn? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorns, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages? What are the messages for Capricorns? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, my Cappies. Capricorns. There is powerful changes that are currently being experienced or that you will be experiencing in the next coming days. There is almost a release of some type of blockage, um, especially for those of you guys that have been waiting to hear some type of message, some type of contact, whether it's in the business world, whether it's in your finances, whether it's a loan, whether it's anything that has to do with uh, your finances or connected to your finances. There is a release of this blockage finally coming through for you and uh, hearing back from them or getting the loan or getting an approval um, or getting a partnership, something that is coming through for you very strongly where you felt like it was a waiting game, um, kind of like killing time, waiting to hear back. You're definitely hearing back from them. There is a deepening of the I'm seeing a lot of synchronizations happening for you guys um, a lot of you guys may already be experiencing this know and understand that that spirit's way of telling you that you are definitely on the right path um, and oftentimes when we are on the right path things seem to go progressively well then all of a sudden we are hit with the wall a feeling of like, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right path? Am I, uh, it almost feels like everything was going too good to be true. And then once we hit that wall, it's like it demoralizes us or it brings our, it makes us question our faith or even doubt ourselves. And what spirit is telling you is don't doubt yourself, Capricorn. You're on the right path and things are aligning for you. Though it may seem like whatever blockage you were dealing with at that point in time, where you felt like, oh, it must mean that it's not for me. No, what Spirit is saying is that it, there was a need for you to wait. There was a need for you to prepare and align yourself to receiving this blessing that's coming through for you. Why? Because it's like when I have clients that are, you know, working on, the business aspect, right? And, you know, everyone wants to grow, everyone wants abundance, everyone wants stability. But though everyone wants that, not everyone is prepared for that. You know, I hear it all the time. You know, I want to make my first million. Um, I want to be running a seven, you know, figure business. Um, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. And nothing is impossible in this world. You can achieve anything. Are you ready for that? Are you mentally prepared for that? Because there is a shift 
that needs to happen, right? You're no longer the version that you were when you were making minimum wage to becoming a, you know, running a million dollar corporation or company. Um, there is a shift in alignment that needs to happen. Uh, you're no longer that version, like I said, the minimum wage version. You have to uh, align yourself to that higher vibration of, you know, the, the business um, CEO, the person that knows how to manage the seven figure business. So it doesn't mean that just because we experience blockages, it doesn't mean that it's not for you. It just means that sometimes spirit wants you to mentally and spiritually align yourself to what they're bringing to you. Why? Because this is why, you know, tons of people win the lottery and then they lose all the money. Why? Because it's easy for you to manifest. Believe it or not, it is extremely easy to manifest. Um, but it's difficult to maintain something uh, if you're not prepared, if you're not in that energetic field. Um, so again, what they're telling you is even though you felt like there was some type of blockage or something that was preventing the progress, doesn't mean that it's not for you. It's already in your energy. It's already coming through for you. Capricorn, what they're telling you is there was patience. Your patience was being tested and not only the patience, but the faith behind you and what you believe yourself to be worthy of receiving that was being tested as well. Um, now, again, if you are questioning or if you've been questioning, am I on the right path? Am I doing what's right for me at this point in time? Spirit is telling you, yes, you are on the right path. You are being guided. I also want to mention for a lot of you Capricorns, you're going to be experiencing seeing karma unfold. And I wouldn't necessarily say in a negative way, but you're definitely going to be seeing like people that misjudged you or that brought judgment towards you um, or that critiqued you or that created rumors about you or that tested you in some type of way. Whether it was taking advantage of your kind heart, whether it was taking advantage of the love or loyalty that you had for them. We have the justice card here and this is like speaking about career, right? Your career brings fairness and protection to others who need your help. But I feel on the grander scale of things. And the reason I say this is because I see you're on the right path and justice card. And these two cards are almost identical, almost similar in energy, which indicates to me that there is justice that is going to be prevailing for you. So if you guys are dealing with anything that has to do with court proceedings, anything that has to do with child, um, what's the word, uh, child support, uh, anything that has to do with the justice system in general, <clears throat> that's going to be working itself out for you and it's going to be to the best of your interest. So you don't have to worry about that. For others of you, like I said, the way of you knowing, knowing that you're on the right path is because those people that have done you wrong or that have taken for granted whatever you have done for them in the past, this could be, go as far as 12 years ago. It could be as yesterday, right? You were like, they took advantage of something whether it was your trust, whether it was your confidence, not confidence, sorry, um, being a confidant to them, whether it was even in love, relationships, partnerships, where you felt like you were duped or where you felt like they treated you unfairly, Spirit is telling you that they are going to allow you to see these people deal with their own karma, deal with the consequences of their own actions. And this is just, again, to highlight that you are on the right path. So <clears throat> I have the artist card here, but with change and justice, what that's speaking to me is almost like a con artist. So 
if you were dealing with any situation where, as an example, your partner was doing sketchy things or being deceiving um, on, you know, unloyal to you or took advantage of you or took advantage of your trust, whatever situation that is, you're going to start to see them have difficulty in their lives or a lot of constant drama where you're going to literally be able to unsee their life unfold and know without a doubt that like, it's just going to ring very true for you. Like that's their karma. And this is spirit's way of telling you that you, that you were right. It's almost like a vindication. There is a feeling of vindication in this. There is a feeling of, like I said, a feeling of if you were duped or if you were like manipulated, taken advantage of or taken for granted, you're going to see them deal with the consequences of those actions. And this is almost like spirit's way of telling you though it may have taken me a while, right? Karma usually takes a while, but it always collects and it always brings people exactly what they ordered. So there is a feeling of vindication here for some of you. It's, you know, it could be in different ways. It could be at work, you know, if people around you were being dishonest or making you feel like, they were your friend, but backstabbing, you're talking bad behind your back. There is something that's going to be happening where it reveals not only their true self, like the mask comes off, but I feel like there is a bit of bochorno, which bochorno signifies like some type of embarrassment on their part because they get caught up. And I feel like you're like, wow, really? Like, but the other people that they were throwing dirt to you about, are also seeing them for their true colors. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like um, in trying to throw dirt in your name, they proven themselves to be disloyal, dishonest, and shown their true colors, not just to you, but to those that they were speaking bad about you. I hope that makes sense. So there is a feeling of like justice taking over. There is a feeling of karma. There is a feeling of even good karma for some of you guys, like if you've been, you know, gone out of your way to help people out or be there for them. And again, you were left feeling like they took you for granted. There is spirit's way of telling you that you're going to be blessed. You're going to experience the blessings that come from your good karma, all the while feeling vindicated for those that did you wrong. All right, my lovelies. All right. Now, Let's go with Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. You guys like, share, and comment. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you guys like these readings. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on with Aquarius here. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages for Aquarius? Where are the messages for Aquarius, Seven, Rising, Venus? Interesting cards that you have here, Aquarius. Very interesting. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius, is 
so what they're telling me is that there is, in order for you guys to thrive, and this is thriving in every aspect of your life, whether it's relationships, partnerships, family, health-wise, uh, or relationships, in order for you to be able to thrive, Aquarius, you need to release a lot of your past or past traumas. And there is a refusal here. There is a refusal of releasing. So you're very attached or connected to some type of experience from your past that still haunts you till this day. Um, that keeps you extremely guarded. Maybe the difficulty of trusting people. Um, or holding a grudge. Holding a grudge in regards to someone that perhaps in the past hurt you. Now, we also have the animals card here. You understand animals and communicate with them intuitively. Trust your inner guidance as the animals are part of your life's work. So I feel like for some of you guys uh, through this cycle or this process that you've been going through, perhaps you recently acquired a pet. Um, and it's very interesting that we're talking about animals. I just recently did the Pluto uh, transit and sixth house, which obviously uh, you rule the sixth house Aquarius. Um, this house is the house that's known uh, for animals as well, meaning, uh, when this transit happens, it highlights the sixth house, uh, the sixth house rules over animals, which is when we are going through difficulties or a certain aspect or situation in our life. Um, <clears throat> that that's when very important animals come into our life. And we're talking about, well, for me would signify like, uh, familiars, for the normal person would be a pet that comes into your life that helps you emotionally heal. Um, and that becomes very important in your life. So for some of you guys, it could be something that you've either have gone through or that you will be, you know, um, acquiring or getting or finding a new pet that might help you with the release of this experience or pain or hurt that was caused to you in the past. Um, but what I'm seeing here is you're guarding yourself out of fear. And when I say guarding yourself, it's like you don't allow people to get close to you, like at least not get close enough where you feel vulnerable and you really show who you really are. Um, you don't allow people to get that close to you because of the pain or hurt that you've been through. And it's almost like the constant feeling of what's the point or the constant feeling of people always let me down. Um, or you start to get close to someone and then you feel like they change or switch up. And there's a feeling of this is the reason why I don't, you know, connect or I don't get close to people, etc. What spirit is telling you is that these experiences, we go through as lessons, obviously, for the evolution of our soul, the growth of our knowledge and wisdom. But it's not for us to stay with them, right? To keep that experience um, to the point that it tainted us and it keeps us from being able to connect again. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's a recurring theme that happens in your life. Now, this doesn't have to be relationships, like I said. This could be, you know, trusting in general. Um, and what they're showing me here, it's almost like you say you want change or you say that you're ready, 
for a connection or you're ready to connect, ready to be a little bit more social, ready to put yourself out there, um, ready to step up in the workplace and, you know, really show people what you're made of. But at the same time, there is a feeling of not being able to trust either the process or the people around you. And when we constantly have this feeling of like having the need to guard ourselves or having the need to protect ourselves from other people, uh, because we're constantly feeling like they're out to get us, then you're putting yourself in this vibration where you are putting yourself in the box. You are isolating yourself, whether it's on a conscious or subconscious level whether you're aware of it or not. It's almost like uh, having people around you, but pushing them, you know, at arm's length so that they don't get that close so that they don't hurt you. But ultimately you're still being hurt because you still crave desire or want the connection or the feeling of wanting to feel accepted or viewed or seen or heard. So what spirit is telling you here is that Yes, though life experiences become difficult sometimes and we get hurt along the way. It's not meant for you to stay in that energy. It's not meant for you to allow it to continue having control and power over you because then it creates blockages for the blessings that are coming your way. So there is a need for you to let go of the feeling of mistrust. It's almost like being courageous to trust again, even though we got hurt the last time. But what if you get it right this time? What if this is the perfect partnership for you in regards to business? What if it's the partnership that really leads you to uh, the next level in your finances? What if it is uh, leads you to this connection that if you really give in, um, it could be a very strong and powerful connection that really transforms your life. So it, what they're telling you is in order for you to thrive, in order for you to grow and to, or to see growth in your life, you have to be courageous in putting yourself out there again uh, without having the need to physically see the safety net. Sometimes we have to take a risk. Um, sometimes it's necessary. And I feel like you have either blocked yourself or isolated yourself or feel very disconnected from the world because it's very difficult for you to connect. Um, so what they're telling you here is that there is definitely a need for you to, the way you feel like the world is out to get you or the way you feel like you can't trust anyone. You can also teach or retrain yourself to learn to see the good in everything and everyone. And I'm going to be honest, what I'm hearing is you got to shake the cynical energy. There is no shame in, there is no shame in trusting again. Or, or allowing yourself to be vulnerable or allowing yourself to connect with people because that doesn't make you vulnerable or it doesn't make you weak. And I feel like for some of you guys, as time has progressed, you have created this image or this persona of yourself. Um, and it's almost like it's you present yourself a certain way, but it's like behind the surface, it's because you're scared. So... What I'm hearing is if you're a female, uh, as an example, you've hit yourself behind this mask of I am independent and I don't need anyone and I don't, you know, depend on anyone. I do everything on my own. And though that's great, you're vibrating from an energy of fear, therefore hiding behind that mask. But underneath it is you fear that if you give yourself the opportunity, you're going to be ending or end up getting hurt again. So it's not who you really are. It's almost a defense mechanism. And if you're a guy or a man, um, it's like you've created this, I'm a lone wolf and I don't need anyone and da-da-da-da-da, but you also have 
this desire to share your living experience with someone that you can, in essence, be vulnerable with and connect with. So what they're telling you is, again, even having the need to have someone there with you or to connect or to get in a partnership, business partnership, like it doesn't mean that you don't have it in you to not do it on yourself, but sometimes it's necessary for us to, it's more meaningful when we share it with other people. Um, so there is a, a, a almost like, stop repeating a cycle that you keep doing that has a lot to do with what you experienced in the past. What it, like what's coming to mind for some of you guys, it could be that in the past, uh, you experienced connections where perhaps the, nothing really came from it. Nothing serious came from it. And you experienced it so much that you've convinced yourself that you don't want a long-term relationship. Or you convinced yourself, as an example, if you happen to only attract people that were married or that were in relationships, you convinced yourself that that's what you want. Though you feel like you're not fulfilled because it's not, you've just watered yourself down. Or for others of you, it could be that, as an example, those around you, like your you know, the masculine energy in your family experienced being left um, by their women. So then you grow up thinking that that's going to be your same destiny. So as a defense mechanism, you're the one that plays with other people's emotions. Or if you're the female energy, it could be that uh, it, the, what you've experienced in early childhood was that, you know, the mother is the independent, the mother is the mother and father figure because the father figure wasn't around. So as a defense mechanism, you, you know, didn't allow people to get close to you because you didn't want to experience being the one left. So there is some type of toxic cycle here that needs to end. And to know and understand that you are in control of your life. You are the one that decides the type of life you're going to leave, um, lead, sorry. Um, and it is up to you what it is that you know within yourself that you are worthy of or that you deserve. And that's what unfolds. So again, end the cycle of selling yourself short and the cycle of, you know, pushing people away or maybe even testing them because they have to prove their love to you. Um, where for some of you guys, it's a game, right? Testing people. Um, and that cycle because it's toxic. And at this point, there is a need. It's almost like you're being deceitful to yourself. Um, and it also signifies that not letting go of those past experiences still keeps you chained or attached to those people from the past that hurt you. All right. All right, my lovelies. That was very deep. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go to Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirits, what are the messages here for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages for Pisces? My lovely Pisces. Shout out to the Pisces out there. My mother just experienced her birthday and my sister a week before that, or a couple of days before that, I should say. A lot of Pisces energy <laughs> in my family as well as my friends. All righty. Pisces, what are the messages for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? There we go. All right, Pisces. Let's see what your messages are here. All right, my lovely Pisces.
Not sure if you guys can hear, but it is really pouring out here in California right now. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm seeing here is I see you guys freeing yourself, Pisces, from a connection that <clears throat> was either toxic or very, very unstable. There was lack of reciprocation or lack of balance. Someone was doing too much or too little in this connection. But the positive in this release, in this freedom, is that you're free to do what you choose to do. And what I mean by that is oftentimes you pour your love, your devotion to relationships that are not necessarily good for you because you're mutable, right? And by mutable, it's, it, you could be almost like um, adaptable. You, if it's you doing too much in the relationship, it's because you're capable of it. So you continue to do it. And it doesn't necessarily make it right because then it leaves the partner, the person that you're dealing with in a very comfortable position. And it is not only after through your exhaustion, right, that you start to pull your energy back and you start expecting them to step up or do things that perhaps they weren't necessarily doing in the past. And then it becomes difficult for them because you got them accustomed to that. So what they're showing me here is you've been dealing with this situation. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you guys have been dealing with these types of relationships where they're not necessarily balanced, uh, sometimes even extremely toxic. But you don't want to give up because you have this dream that you're trying to achieve or you have this dream where you've made up your mind. This is the person I'm going to be with the rest of my life or this is the person I'm going to marry. So you don't want to quit. You don't want to give up. You want to just keep trying. And in the keep trying, you're selling yourself short. And it has a lot to do with the fear of not being able to find something better. Or not being able to be alone. For some of you guys, there's fear of being alone. But what I'm seeing is, for those of you guys that are connecting with this, Know and understand that the cycle of toxic relationships or toxic situations or situationships are coming to an end. And especially now with Saturn in your sign, Pisces, it's like we're not messing around anymore. If you're not going to be serious about Pisces, do not even waste Pisces time. Like your patience and your requirements, your expectations are like you're not going to jeopardize that anymore. So there's freedom behind that because you are coming to the understanding of your self-worth, what you bring to the table, what you bring to relationships, what you do for your partners. Are you doing too much? Are you doing too little? Are they doing too much or are they doing too little? Because if they're doing too little, then that's not going to work for you anymore. The positive in this, that right in the center, we have fulfillment, which indicates to me getting to that cycle of freeing yourself from this connection or this toxic situation that you've been dealing with is going to open up the door for you to finally experience a healthy loving relationship, Pisces. Why? Because we have the calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. So there is, you know, Saturn in your sign. Saturn is going to bring seriousness to relationships, to partnerships, seriousness to your worthiness. And what you know and feel you deserve. So in this seriousness, in this 
it's going to bring to you partners that are better suited for you, that are healthy or healthier than the ones you've dealt with on an emotional level because Saturn brings maturity. So there is a deepening of a connection for some of you guys dealing with uh, a soulmate that's coming in for you. For some of you guys, this could be an older person, a couple of years older than you. This is a person that is emotionally mature. They know exactly what they want. They want you, Pisces. They've made up their mind and they're going to prove it to you. You have the you deserve love oracle, which usually when I see this, it indicates to me a person that comes in and almost like loves you, loves you to healing, if that makes sense. Like they love you so much and the way they treat you is like queen treatment or, or king treatment that they love you so good and they love you in such a healthy way that they themselves start to heal you by showing you what it is that you deserve, how you deserve to be treated, how you deserve to be taken care of. It is a card that represents, like I said, a mature and healthy love, a love where you don't have to cut yourself short, a love where it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not conditional. It is unconditional. Where in the past, perhaps you've experienced nothing but relationships that were conditional. What worked for them and what didn't work for them, they would pull back or they would break up with you or they would leave you or they would F it up so that you could be the one to walk away. And in this situation, it's like they're going to go above and beyond that it's going to really transform your life. For some of you guys, it could be we have religious factors. For some of you guys, it could be that this is a person that is extremely either spiritual or religious. This is a person that honors morals and that can teach you. either to connect with your higher spirit or to connect to God or all consciousness. And integrity is what I'm hearing as well. So I feel like in the next coming days, Pisces, if you've been dealing with a toxic situation or a toxic relationship, that's quickly going to come to an end. Is it something you're going to seek? Probably not. I feel like the partner may be seeking the freedom at this point or they may jeopardize the relationship or they may push you to the brink of having no choice or you feeling in that moment like you have no choice but to stand up for yourself. Do not resist these changes that are happening in your life right now, Pisces, because it is to the best of your interest it is spirit looking out for you. It is spirit opening up your eyes. It is spirit guiding you to what you deserve. You are worthy of unconditional love, Pisces. Love yourself. Because the people that love you, the people that genuinely care for you, the man or woman that is with you is going to want nothing but the best for you. They are going to clap for you when you're doing amazing. They're not going to try to self-sabotage you. They're not going to try to pull you down. They're not going to try to block your blessings. No, they're going to encourage you. They're your number one fan. They're your number one cheerleader. That is unconditional love. So, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did, definitely comment below. Let me know so that we can continue doing these readings for you guys. I want to wish you all the very best. I hope that this gives you guidance, insight, understanding. And until next time.
I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.